Welcome to the Supply Chain Lab. Today we're thrilled to have the Wuho Gala Gala, an, ard an ardent advocate for cycling and an owner of a bicycle shop. Joining us along Mr. Tatendambara, a transport and supply chain expert. Together they'll help us explore the transformative role of cycling in Africa's transport and logistics sectors. From last mile delivery solutions to sustainable transport initiatives, we'll dive deep into how bicycles are poised to revolutionize mobility in both urban and rural areas. Get ready for an exciting discussion on the potential of cycling to create a greener and more efficient um, transport system across the continent. Tabucho, Ms. Mbara, thank you so much for joining us um, on today's discussion. So I think we'll start with you, Tabucho. Please share your personal story with us, how you became a cyclist, how you decided to open up your bicycle shop. Um, yeah, just share a little bit of detail around that. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Tebuko Kalakala. I'm the co-founder of Bandits Bicycle Club, Cycle Boutique, and Girls on Bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the journey started in 2021, where we saw a huge gap of literally urban cyclists not actually paying attention to it due to COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, in those times, obviously, we saw how COVID took a huge uh, role for us to kind of like separate ourselves from each other where it was more about you know the whole pandemic and stuff like that but the moment we got an opportunity to say look let's come all together again we can now socialize again and we can keep a safe distance we found an opportunity through cycling that look it could be one of the activity sports that could unite people again because there was that huge gap amongst mm -hmm. everyone during that time uh, with that being so, the gap that we found was that obviously uh, camaraderie, friendship, it was kind of like lost in the line at that time. Mm. So we brought people together. We started uh, all about, you know, the uh, Thursday night rides, you know, the social rides that we were having mm. and seeing a gap also there that people actually were not affording bicycles, were mm. struggling to afford bicycles. So we made means to kind of like upcycle bicycles and mm. uh, sell bicycles to people at more enough affordable, affordable price. And that led obviously to opening a shop because now there's a demand. Mm. And from a demand is not only for buying bicycles, but also repairs mm. and community where they could actually come about and chill. This is now starting a club mm. and all in all, it just brings people together. And that's how it is all. That's how it all came about. That's how it started. Oh, yeah. that's a very that's a that's a brilliant story, um, Tabucho. Mr. Mbara, could you introduce yourself? Um, tell us a little bit about your journey and why you're actually interested in this kind of transport mode um within supply chain and logistics. Okay, uh let me start by saying thank you very much, Sheku, for affording me this opportunity to come and share uh my views on this uh, uh, scintillating subject mm. of cycling. Uh, let me also say that uh, uh, this is a gray area mm. uh, in many countries and also in many, many communities. Mm. Uh, but it is actually a very, very important area. I also want, I also look forward to get uh, the views of the practitioner and I will also be able to learn from him. Mm. Right. Let me just go back uh, so some years ago. My first qualification was uh, in transport planning and management. So I'm trained as a transport planner. Okay. And then when I did my first degree in the uh, late 70s, uh, I think the thinking in terms of uh, traffic management was different. Mm -hmm. It was based on uh, what uh, we call a predict and provide uh, approach where uh, traffic would actually be predicted, you make focus for the future, mm -hmm. and then you provide the requisite infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the, 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 the traffic. Mm -hmm. That was the norm then. But uh, later on, uh, when I did my master's a decade later, the thinking had changed. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, because uh, 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 the predict and provide uh, as a solution to traffic management was not working. Mm -hmm. It was congesting the environment mm -hmm. and also it was making uh, 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 communities, uh, cities car dependent. Mm -hmm. So that actually changed. Then uh, later on, uh, we also had uh, the World Bank uh, report on world, uh, the Commission on uh, World Development on the Environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, which also again changed uh, uh, the perception as far as uh, uh, traffic issues were concerned. Uh, that particular report, it's a famous report and also a famous quotation which defined development as a development uh, that uh, it should not actually compromise 
uh, the aspirations of future generations. Mm. So what we do to the environment today, we should always think Consider. about mm. uh, the future generation. Mm. Then uh, actually the climax, as far as my experience is concerned, I also got an opportunity to visit Japan on, for five months. Mm. Uh, I was undertaking research there. When I arrived at the place where I was actually accommodated for, for five months, mm. uh, I was actually uh, greeted with a, a big present, and that present was a bicycle. <laughs> so for five months, I was actually cycling. Okay. And uh, when I returned to Zimbabwe, my, my daughter even remarked that I've lost a, a lot of weight. Wait. Mm. So I'm really a believer in cycling, mm. and I've got a passion. Uh, although I don't do it often, but mm. I would really encourage people uh, to cycle because there are numerous uh, benefits which you probably may be able to explore and today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think you guys give um, quite good views. I mean, I, I did a, a cool stat pool before um, this discussion where it says 78% of people on the continent actually either walk or cycle to work um, every day, which is quite a huge percentage of people. However, the infrastructure... Um, when it comes to cycling, is not geared towards um, supporting people to cycle. So as a cyclist, what are your views around um, the current infrastructure? And how do you, um, with your club, how do you work around the infrastructural um, issues? Well, to, to start off with, like the gentleman did mention it quite well and clear. You know, back in the days, the studies were more about on, on transportation, what 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 are the ways of means to move around goods mm. and that was obviously uh, your jra your sunrolls they were focusing more on like your trucks and stuff like that and mobility of cars to move around and that there was all the statistics at that time mm. but cycling um i wouldn't say it was never considered that much in south africa but it mm. was a means of moving around back in the 40s back in the 50s the mm. history is there and it still lies within um, and coming further, much or more, in 20, 2009, mm. there is an actual performer that was made and a document that was made about as to the cycle lanes that we see that mm. were actually um, outrolled in 2015. Mm. And it shows now that at that time, traffic studies and, and uh, implementations of further much more for pedestrians, cyclists, and any other person who would be actually using either any modes of public transport mm. were considered into the factor of transportation and mobility. Mm. Um, in literally last month, we were attending uh, the SMA, which is Smart Mobility Africa. Mm. This focuses a lot on micro mobility around Africa as a whole. Mm. So you start to see, uh, and yesterday even we did have a kind of discussion with my friends about it. Uh, a lot of countries that uh, have been, um, what you name it, they, they, they literally, uh, they've been independent mm. for more than uh, 30 years are still using bicycles out there because, pub, uh, you know, transportation is still an issue. But with us in South Africa, we've been privileged enough that within the 30 years of independency, mm. our transport sector, our public transportation is still of good use. But other countries, they still rely on bicycles as a mode of transport, mm. as a mode of delivery, you know. Mm. And when you look at the differences as to third world countries and countries in Africa, mm. third world countries are fine finding a um, mode of transport of a bicycle as a form of leisure. Mm. We see it literally on our mm. social medias where people go grocery shoppings and whatever, but it shows that there is a huge um, educational aspect that taps into mm. the whole thing about what health does it bring you? Uh, how does it help with the global warming and stuff? Mm -hmm. So with us in South Africa is Bandits Bicycle Club as well as Cycle Boutique and Girls on Bikes. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of information that we're trying to bring together. That's the research that we're making to try to actually spread it amongst everybody who's within, you know, the urban sectors of Johannesburg mm -hmm. to say, are you aware of what a pedestrian... Um, paving is and how does it work about mm. do you understand what a cycle lane is do you understand mm. the mode of transports that exist within your city and how you use them 
but we as cyclists, we are also trying to uh, enroll a little bit more about cycling and how people can commute more in the city, mm -hmm. just to be more on the healthier aspect, as well as looking as to the global aspect of the environmental friendly mm -hmm. side. Yeah. I think you touched on a few um, critical things. The first thing is obviously around whether people do understand what a cycle lane is and what, what I guess, um, what was the paving, like what mm. a passenger paving is, 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 is there for. So, Ms. Nambara, I know you gave the example where you were in, I think it was Japan, was it Japan? Yeah, where you mm. said they gave you a bicycle. I'm guessing from an infrastructural perspective, they had the kind of in infrastructure that allowed you to safely be able to move from one space to another space. Did you, um, could you relate to some of the things that the Bukho just touched on now? Um, and like, where do you think we are as a continent and what um, changes do you think are unnecessary? Okay, thank you. Uh, let me start from the premise uh, uh, as far as public transport is concerned in the continent, Africa continent. Uh, the level in terms of access to public transport uh, uh, within 500 to 1,000 meters mm. uh, of public transport is very low, 32%, mm. compared to uh, uh, the world a wide uh, uh, level of 52 percent so mm. africa is very low which then suggests that say, there's a lot of scope for for, for cycling mm. let me also come to the point which uh, he mentioned uh, in terms of uh, the growth of uh, cycles uh, bicycles in africa uh, and he also mentioned uh, in terms of exercise and leisure mm. Mm. south africa probably is second to none as far as leisure cycling is concerned that's mm. true but when it comes to the continent at large, East Africa, West Africa, uh, bicycles actually used as a source of life, mm -hmm. carrying goods yes. to, to, to markets and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where actual probably the difference is. Not so much in terms of uh, going to work, mm -hmm. but if you go to Uganda, for instance, they use bicycles to go to work mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. So there, there is really a, a a, a lot of scope <laughs> as far yes. as bicycles are concerned. Mm. Again, worldwide, uh, by 2029, it is actually anticipated that the bicycle uh, market sales will actually uh, reach something $138 million. Mm. So there's actually that growth. Is this for leisure or for, uh, for transport? I think it's both. It's, I think it's both, yeah. yeah. You also mentioned... Uh, uh, another point, uh, which is was very interesting in terms of statistics, that's, I think 78% mm. uh, is cycle and walk in Africa. Mm. I think the bulk of that is to do with walking. The, 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 no, the bulk of 78% is walking, walking. Not, yeah, cycling. not cycling. Cycling, I'm sure it has got a low uh, uh, proportion. Mm. The statistics which I, I, I am aware of, for instance, if we compare Africa and other countries, mm. if you go to a country like Netherlands, Amsterdam, uh, 38 people, 38 percent, uh, 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 or rather, cycling has got a, a, a proportion of mm. 38 percent. That's the market share for cycling. If you come to Africa, Nairobi, about five percent. Mm. South Africa, on the whole, is less than one percent. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the ownership of bicycle as the primary mode of transport in South Africa is about six percent. Mm. In the Netherlands, about forty-five percent. In China, uh, more than thirty percent, and so forth and so on. Mm. So, cycling in South Africa is growing, but uh, in terms of uh, if we compare with other countries, other mm. continents, is still actually very low. Cycling culture in Europe, uh, in uh, Asia Pacific, is mm. actually has reached a high level mm. compared to Africa. But there's a lot of potential in Africa, mm. both as leisure is also as a source of livelihood. Mm -hmm. And what do you think we need, what, what do you think, what do you guys think needs to happen for us to tap into that? Is it, is it that, because um, I mean, the African continent is filled with like the youth, that's the general population. Mm -hmm. Is it that the youth prefers the car versus the bicycle because of status like reasons? Um, or is there something else other than that? I mean, you mentioned affordability and sure. um, how your shop kind of, <laughs> Um, I don't know, like it comes into or it repurposes bicycles to make them more affordable um, for people. Is that one of the drivers or is it a status thing? What do you think um, is stopping or why is the growth in cycling so slow? To, yeah. be, to, be, to be quite um, honest with you, I mean, 
if you look into South Africa, that 1% that we're speaking about of cyclists, right? Uh, first and foremost, we still need to remember that in South Africa, cycling is still considered as a sport, only as a form of sports. Not in a, in a way, like there's no ways of commuting or whatsoever, mm. but it's still as a sport. Take, for example, on the 19th of November, we're going to be having Ride Joburg 94.7, mm. which is a race. And it closes and they demarcate even the highway, which is the M1, right, for cyclists to be recognized on that party. But it's only that day, if mm. we are to, to say, you know. Uh, where else we as Cycle Boutique and Bandits Bicycle Club, we make it on a weekly basis. Mm. So we do like your homies night ride, your girls on bikes and critical mass and many other rides that come in within on a weekly basis. Just to remind and activate people to understand that there is a way of cycling rather than being only considered as a sport, but also as a way of commuting. Right. Mm. So. The, the the educational aspect side of how we can educate our people about it mm. uh, we we need a little bit more of information sharing mm. and from what i have actually um, came to realize there is less of people in south africa or less people in universities of south africa that are researching more about cycling mm. in south africa compared to the five people that actually have interviewed about cycling in Africa or South Africa mm -hmm. have been either from other countries, which is the, the US or the UK, and they want to know more. But I believe that also with us, there are many ways where we can like share with the city of Joburg. So mm -hmm. to say, uh, from the statistics that we have, from all the data capturing that we have, where we can share to saying that these are the number of people who are cycling, and that could obviously, I think, in, in anything. Mm. Currently, right now, the youth also believes in numbers, mm. believes in trends. Mm. How many people are doing it? Who's doing it? And can I jump onto it as well to add myself as that particular 1% or 0.5% to the actual trend? So mm. it can grow in like huge numbers. But also just to remember, like... Um, in many other trends that we are looking at currently right now, the youth is kind of like more uh, influenced as to the Western culture. Mm. So we wouldn't be surprised when they love a Rolls Royce, when they love a Lamborghini or any other car. Mm. But it's kind of like having to remind them that also a bicycle is a way and mode of transport mm. that can actually take you as far places as I've went myself mm. and also can save you a lot. So it also taps into the economical side, mm. how to make people understand what a bicycle can save you in terms of economy, in terms of your budgets and stuff stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it all goes about how we educate our people mm -hmm. and making them aware. It's like on a daily basis where I would find a pedestrian walking on a cycle lane. Mm -hmm. I can't shout at them to saying, get off the cycle lane. Mm -hmm. The person doesn't understand the differences between the two. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the infrastructure, when it takes place, it's due to obviously seeing that there's a demand of cyclists, but less information being spread. Mm -hmm. So I think there, sh there is a lot of information that should be shared and mm -hmm. that could be shared to kind of make people aware of what infrastructures are taking into the city to mm -hmm. understand what they are and creating um, of such groups like ours more in, in expenditure in like universities where up and coming people can recognize what's going on mm -hmm. so that they can be aware as most as to the infrastructure, to the bicycles, to the motors, to the public transport that they're using. Mm -hmm. And they can actually try to jump into all of them and mm -hmm. have a feel or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mbara, I know you love this research <laughs> and you've written or you've supervised quite a few learners that are interested in the research of, with regards to cycling. Can you comment a little bit about that and what your comments are around how we can tap into this potential? Okay. Yeah, before I actually go uh, on that, let me also answer the question raised earlier on, which I probably didn't answer in terms of my experience in Japan as far as uh, cycling infrastructure is concerned. Mm. The infrastructure is there. And also, bicycles are accorded priority at intersections. Mm. So, the environment is conducive uh, to, to cycling. That's number one. Mm. And also, coming to what uh, Tabako has actually said, I can't agree more mm. uh, in terms of uh, education. Mm. But uh, let me also hasten to say that uh, we have good infrastructure, 
recycling infrastructure from this campus all the way up to uh, Doreen van den campus, which mm -hmm. has been provided some years ago. Mm -hmm. You hardly see people actually mm -hmm. cycling. The big question is why? Mm. It probably comes, it boils down to what you have mentioned <laughs> in terms of creating awareness. Mm. Mm. This is actually very, very critical. Mm. Uh, I always ask my students on, a, on an annual basis, okay, when you, after graduating, start working, what do you want to buy? Mm. Uh, I want to buy a car. <laughs> mm. Nobody ever thinks of a cycle. Mm. So I, I think, again, we, we also need to raise uh, awareness among our, our mm. student population. Mm. Mm. Yes. I have conducted research with, with students uh, on, on cycling, but particularly looking at the issues. Why, for instance, uh, people uh, in South Africa, in our cities like Johannesburg and so forth and so on, uh, are not cycling. Mm -hmm. The first thing they always mention is uh, safety. Mm. And uh, they also mention about the minibuses, which cannot actually uh, respect uh, the cyclists, the mm. they're not being respecting pedestrians, they want about cyclists and so forth and so on. So that is what actually one of the issues. Mm. They are also uh, other issues uh, to do with, uh, I'm pleased that you're uh, actually in the cars, in the bicycle selling business. Uh, in other countries, for mm. instance, when we talk about uh, cycling as a mode of transport, uh, uh, it's not cheap in other communities to acquire a bicycle. Mm. It's actually very expensive. Mm. So how do you actually get that, uh, that, that, that bicycle? Mm. Yeah, probably we'll discuss that later on. But that is also another issue, they, they, they have to afford a mm. bicycle. In other countries, I'm not sure about South Africa, there are also cultural issues mm. when it comes to cycling. Mm. Uh, people of certain gender, if they are seen uh, cycling, mm. uh, it, it's not taken well. Mm. So mm -hmm. again, in terms of education, making awareness, we need to, to break uh, mm. those, 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 those kind of barriers. Mm. So, yeah, there's a lot of research which is actually required. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the infrastructure part uh, is very interesting. As I said, we put infrastructure, why are not people cycling? Mm. And uh, uh, the safety is another issue, and the cultural barriers are also another issue, the, the, the cost of the bicycle. All these issues need to actually be taken into consideration mm. and i mean like how do we then take these um challenges or these issues into consideration i know in the european countries they start things like bicycle sharing schemes i don't think we really have um that in south africa we don't really have a lot of that i think we chatted about it a bit in your office uh, mr mbara um and maybe if we had a bicycle sharing scheme on campus where students were able to <laughs> get those bicycles so that they can cycle to Dornfontein and come back and put the bicycle back. Maybe that would encourage um, more cycling. But I guess also for a lot of students, I would assume a bicycle is probably an unaffordable, they can, they can barely afford transports to come to campus. So I, can, <laughs> I would think that a bicycle is an unaffordable pleasure for them. Like it's not something that they believe they would be able to afford. Mm -hmm. And I guess maybe safety, not just in terms of whether they will arrive at their destination safely, but um, is it safe for them to cycle? Will they not get robbed? Um, because we do know we do have a crime challenges in South Africa and probably in other countries as well. So how do we then, like, what are the, what are the things that need to happen for us to start to overcome some of the challenges and some of the stigma that is around um, cycling? Okay. Uh... Let me put it this way. I, I think uh, to be fair also to, 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 to the country, uh, Tobago may, may also be aware that uh, as far back as 2007, uh, the DOT mm -hmm. uh, had a rollout plan on uh, uh, Sho, Shobakulu. Sho, Shobakalula. Shobakalula. Yes. <laughs> this is a program which was actually brought on for by, by government in terms of uh, encouraging people Mm. Uh, to, to, to cycle, particularly school children on the periphery mm. of urban areas and also in rural areas. Mm. And the program actually went further in terms of also giving students, uh, school children, bicycles so mm. that they could actually uh, cycle to work. Mm. I think it was also meant to, to, uh, to be rolled on and extended to, to, to farms and also women were also mentioned in particular so that they can also be encouraged. So that's in a way, it's a uh, a sort of uh, a bicycle sharing scheme mm, which mm. can be encouraged in other countries 
they've got a rental system whereby you can actually go and rent a bicycle and actually use for a defined period and uh, return it back. Mm. I also experienced a situation uh, some years ago in, in Zimbabwe uh, when ILO was involved in a program uh, in the rural areas to increase the efficiency of transport. Mm. And they were, they actually ran a, a credit scheme whereby people can actually borrow. Mm. money to buy a bicycle mm. and uh, they could actually return this money after two three seasons of harvesting mm. which was actually very good mm. and it actually worked well so yeah there, there are a number of uh, measures uh, yeah, which can actually be put in place to encourage people to cycle as, as far as sharing the bicycle mm. is concerned mm. And uh, also, even uh, say in, uh, in Uganda, they've got a number of uh, bicycle sharing schemes. Mm. And uh, West Africa, they also have uh, 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 those kind of schemes. Mm. And mm. as I said, in South Africa, the, the Chovakulula a scheme on paper is very, very good. Mm. But unfortunately, you hardly read about it. <laughs> I don't know what is actually happening. Mm. But as, as, as recently as I think April this year, uh, the then Minister of, uh, of, uh, of, of Transport, uh, so yeah, uh, actually distributing by bicycles to, to certain communities. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, mm. so that's a move in the right direction. Okay, <laughs> I mean, you seem to know about the Shovaguli. Yeah, so so as he, uh, you know, Mr. Bora said that based on the DOT that was issued out at that time, mm. that also included the cycle lanes that you see currently right now existing from Bramfontein all the way coming here, mm. and as far as going to Doranfontein, you know. Mm. Um, in terms of bike sharing, mm. um, obviously those bicycles, when they were issued out at that time, they, they were issued out to communities whereby to kind of like introduce the whole sharing bicycle sharing scheme Mm. Um, at this point of time, we as Bandas Bicycle Club and Cycle Boutique, we are reintroducing that on our own private side mm. where people can hire bicycles to cycle through the city, right? Mm. Now, this is as, as funny and tricky as it gets. Mm. Um, within, I would say, the 10% of people who hire a bicycle from us, mm. it's international people cycle around the cycle lanes that we have mm, mm, mm. but i don't blame them because that's what they know that's what they're used to that's mm, what they're coming mm, from right mm, mm. whereas to a south african person especially south african young people mm. so currently now there is a stigma that's going around mm. which i don't think it's only in south africa maybe in other countries as well mm. a bicycle is still considered as a black man poor most mode of transport mm, mm. so you can understand from a golf gti mm. and a bicycle from a person who's graduating being asked in the classroom to say or in a lecture room that what would you buy mm, the first mm, thing will mm. be a golf gti because mm. if it's a bicycle that means it considers me that i'm still poor i can't afford mm. but looking at it and uh, sporty side where the sports sector these bicycles are very expensive they people are, are buying expensive. them you understand mm. and it kind of gives a notion to people that oh bicycles are expensive in general mm. but where we're starting to re um recycle bicycles and upcycle bicycles on our end trying to make payment plans because we do have payment plans where people can buy secondhand bicycles mm. for a certain affordable price mm. where you can buy a bicycle to cycle but mm. there's, there's the safety aspect then jumps into place people asking questions like is it safe for me to cycle on the road mm. can i do it mm. by myself mm. and the very touchy subject is when a female really asks that question to mm. say, is it mm. safe for me as a female to cycle on the road? You know, mm. um, the sad part also is how our cycle lanes kind of like don't join all the time. Mm. There's where, you know, certain intersections where the cycle lane will end. Mm. Um, obviously at that time of how they were prioritizing of road infrastructure and developments in the future mm. it happened that probably the cycle lane ended there so it kind of makes it tough for the person to join the next cycle lane so it kind of like distance them to say I can cycle to this end um, but with us at this point what we are doing as we started the initiative called Girls on Bikes. Girls on Bikes is an initiative to also kind of bring the aspect side of vulnerability into cycling. Mm. So there's there's many ways you can tackle it. Everybody thinks only men cycle. And also in South Africa, as we said, 
cycling is still considered as, considered as a male dominated sport. Mm. But we're trying to break that to saying that also women do cycle. So mm. the question now becomes how does a taxi di- driver take note of a cyclist on the road? Mm. If you put a woman on a bicycle, probably a, cycli- uh, a taxi driver would say, a woman is very vulnerable. I need to actually give that 1.5 distance meters away from her so that she can cy- cycle more safer, you know? Mm, mm. And that could also go for us as guys as well. So that's why these kind of rides that we do on weekends that we're, and critical mass as well, mm. where we all jump as, as a mass group of riders on the road and mm. we ask to share that one particular lane with everybody else mm. that kind of brings awareness mm. and it brings everybody to understanding but in terms of like young people how they can actually um get to be more um knowledge about cycling mm. i think it's those kind of like cycle groups where we bring about because with us Currently, right now, we are even thinking of how can we accommodate students? Mm. Yes, booking a bicycle for that two hour cycle with, um, you know, a, a, a van at the back, which is it's a Marshall van. That's only 200. That, that's also us. It's kind of us being there and providing that safety and everything. Mm. But for students to cycle on a day to day basis, what does it look like? What mm. is the cost for a student? Is it maybe that 20 rands a day where mm. you can actually use it for a full day mm. or a 10 rand a single trip, 10 rand a, uh, a, another 10 rand a return trip mm. where it makes it. But with that also, it's like we have to consider it very well because as we said, the economy is not always on the good side for everyone. Mm. So we're trying to look at things and how to actually measure them. But I know for a fact as that as to the DOT that we had back then that enrolled everything else, they are trying to, the city of Joburg is still trying to bring it back into live again. Mm. So I do believe these bicycle sharing schemes and bicycles being handed out, it's going to come back and they're going to enroll it. And mainly I think they're going to start from the student accommodations because we have a lot of them currently mm. existing mm. now. Mm. From Bramfontein, you see buses driving down here to APK. So from there, I think that's where we could start from and students could cycle here and creates more awareness. Mm. By the way, even when students will be cycling in a group, it's called a cycle bus. Mm. And as you go to other countries, that's what you Mm -hmm. realize. Parents going out in the morning with their children and everybody from the community coming out and Mm. they create a cycle bus. As you reach your destination, about to reach your destination, you jump off the cycle bus, literally cycle closer Mm -hmm. to your workplace and the bus just carries on. It's just obviously with time, you need to catch the time of that bus. So in Cape Town, it's happening right now Mm -hmm. where there's a group of employees from, I think, Stellenbosch, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. They're working at a Woolies. There's a Woolies that even build showers to mm. reassure for their employees to cycle to work. Mm. And apparently mm. there's also privileges as to you cycle to work on a daily basis. So mm. those are the kind of things that you can entice to people to kind of take initiative into the cycling mm. uh, thing, you know. And yeah, it, it, I think there's, there's so much growth in it. Mm. It's just how we educate people into it. How mm. do we showcase it? How to, do we make it accessible and easy to people mm. to kind of jump into it? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like the comments about the cycle bus. I mean, I think it makes it a little bit safer if you're cycling as a big group versus like somebody cycling Small. alone. Mm. Yes. Um, that's quite interesting. So, Mr. Mbara, I just want to ask to touch on cycling from a last mm. mile delivery perspective you spoke about uganda this is quite big in uganda uh maybe not so much in south africa how can um people maybe think about how to start a business where they do last mile deliveries using bicycles okay let let me start from the premise that uh, uh last mile delivery particularly in urban areas mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's costly mm-hmm. it's expensive and uh, also even in terms of the environment this is where a lot of emissions actually take place why because they've got a lot of traffic uh mm. within the central area traveling uh, at a very low speed and the emissions actually increase in that uh, kind of de- uh, environment so i think a change uh in terms of uh, how you deliver in the central area taking probably of the the, the big uh, trucks and the introduce uh, smaller uh, vehicles, including bicycles, if there are small parcels to be delivered, mm. uh, I think it will be it will be fine. 
for the basket and actual maneuver is way. Mm. And also in terms of time, you also be able to, 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 to save time if you actually do uh, this kind of delivery. In South Africa, this has not actually happened, but there are other countries. There was a reading of oh, one of the cities in Latin America where they, they make use of these e-bikes to make deliveries mm. in urban areas very, very successfully. It's also an area which we also need to, to, to research on in, in South Africa in terms of how we can uh, 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 maximize on, on the use of uh, bicycles mm. in terms of uh, deliveries. Small parcels like medicines, they can actually be delivered mm. actually using, using by, by bicycles. So mm. the last mile is actually very important. We're also talking in terms of the distances mm. which uh, uh, are ideal for, for, for bicycles. Because there's a threshold as far as bicycles mm. are concerned, mm. beyond which you, it's not uh, practical it's not to cycle. Yeah. yeah. So within these short distances, a bicycle uh, actually has got a, a, a huge market that can actually be used. And hence, the last mile, as far as bicycle are concerned, becomes actually very, very important. Mm. I'd like I, to add on yeah. just about it. Mm. It's actually been enrolled. Is in it? Soweto, there are e bikes, oh, okay. e cargo bikes. <laughs> okay. They are designed in South Africa in Stellenbosch by a um, company called Stroom. Mm -hmm. So they design e cargo bikes that is a cargo bike and a trailer. Okay. These bicycles, there's already three of them existing in Soweto that are making deliveries in a short mile space mm -hmm. in a vicinity. But not only that, there are also um, other companies like tuck shops that are already now starting with the whole delivery system of bicycles in Soweto. Okay. From the vicinities of like Vilagazi, being it, uh, it's a you know tourist uh, attraction center. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of restaurants. So people in Soweto are still considering that. Mm -hmm. Nando's at some point also enrolled their e-bikes for deliveries in mm -hmm. Soweto as well, from Maponya Mall all the way to Lamene. Mm -hmm. And the company, the, 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 the business that I'm speaking about that has been given these bicycles to actually make these deliveries is called Shovi Bike. Mm -hmm. So they are based in Zondi, but uh, in every day, their meetup point is a safe hub in Jablani. Mm -hmm. And from a safe hub, you can there's an app where now people can make their orders um, and making their orders, the guys can go collect an order mm -hmm. and deliver them to it. So mm -hmm. e-bikes, cargo bikes are already of existence in okay. Soweto. Okay. And I'm one of the people who actually services and maintains those bicycles mm -hmm. at our shop. Mm -hmm. So they are growing at large now to a far extent where they are expanding their perimeters mm -hmm. of deliveries as far as now they are coming as far as into Joburg. So mm -hmm. the more the bikes you're having, with Stroom, um, they are planning to, I think, uh, outroll 50 bicycles within Gauteng. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be where townships like Alexandra, Fosloras, uh, Soweto, mm -hmm. and many other townships that are going to be actually allocated these bikes to actually work about the holy mobility. So we are focusing on micro-mobility, and mm. also focusing on uh, global warming to lessen the emissions of the vehicles yeah. that are being used. Mm. Yes, in Johannesburg, peak hour traffic times, we can differ as to that. But it, it, you start to see that at most times when it's peak hours, mm. yeah, that's where the emissions actually really turn up. But mm. during the day, it helps a lot when these deliveries are taking place mm. on, on such uh, ways of mobility as well. Yeah. That's Sorry, the, the, and I don't know, Mr. Nambara, maybe you know, but I don't know, what is an e-bike, guys? Like, is it, <laughs> is it different from a normal bike? And, Can you maybe just and, <laughs> explain and, what and the e, difference an is? An e-bike is just like an electric vehicle, electric. so E stands for electric. <laughs> okay. So yeah. it, it, helps, it helps the person who's riding it to put in more, less effort oh, in I such see. steep areas. So it's like you would manually paddle it mm. on a flatter surface yeah. area mm. and on a downhill going area. But mm. on tougher terrains where now the terrain gets a little bit steeper, you have an assistance of an electric control oh, where I when see. you paddle, it gives you that push just to make it up the, the steep hill. And from there on, you can take it manually as well. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Hybrid. Hybrid. It's hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, I don't want to pretend I know. And then next thing people are like, oh, we watched that episode about bicycles what is an e-bike and even i don't know what an yeah. e-bike is no yeah. did you want to say something mr mbara i think i interrupted you when i asked what an e-bike is no i think he's uh, he's defined it too well mm. all, all i wanted to say is that uh, i was not aware that in soweto they've actually introduced yeah. them mm. and uh, 
I think I would love with your assistant to go to the Soweto and learn more about this. No, it, from it, from from a research point of view. I think you did say that <laughs> since a practitioner is here, yeah. I mean, you know, all key points and things that you I was unaware. Aware. Yeah, it okay. is interesting. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then. Are bicycles more affordable? I mean, fine, there's the introduction of the e-bike, but obviously there's like a, a com competition between the e-bikes and I guess the motorcycles as well. Um, I don't know if you can comment a little bit about, about that. Do they service different markets or do you think um, being on a motorcycle and a bicycle is this kind of like the same industry? Do you see it as the same? I wouldn't say so. It's it's completely not the same. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. If If you are one person who's like, us as bandits bicycle club focusing on the whole you know the eco ecosystem as well mm -hmm. using a motorcycle you still kind of like having those emotions yeah. i myself the, I, there is a company vehicle that we use mm. i don't like driving it i i just don't like driving in general mm. Mm. if it was with me i could cycle every day but it's those kind of terms and 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 focuses that we look at of safety you know i mm. used to commute every day from Soweto to Bramfontein when the shop was still in Bram. Mm. I used to commute on a daily basis, but it starts becoming a little bit unsafe. Um, there isn't that mass number of people. You need to catch a certain time frame where you would catch people still on peak hours. So peak mm. hour is much more safer, but everybody's in a rush as well. Mm. But using a motorcycle and a bicycle, those are two different things. I think it literally says it itself. You are motorized, you know, everything mm. you're just relaxing but within the delivery system obviously um in south africa being that we have roads that are a little bit more enlarged it's it makes delivery more easier and quicker and faster mm. uh, but also bearing in mind cycling is not a big thing as of yet in south africa where it could be considered as a form of delivery it's mm. only just been introduced and we're trying to implement it mm. in certain areas right mm. uh, but it's not the same and i wouldn't consider it the same myself mm. i'm um i won't lie i'm a huge harley davidson fan myself mm. Uh, but uh, if it's anything, cycling will always come first mm. because it focuses on your health. It focuses on everything that has to do about you. Mm. You just become good on a bicycle. And there's nothing as good as riding a bicycle, having that fresh air, that sun glazing on you. Mm. It's just a beautiful experience on its own. So mm. having on a, being on a motorcycle and bicycle is totally two different things. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any comments on that, Ms. Nambara, from a, a research perspective? Do you think these two, when we, re, when, we, when, we, um, when we do research on cycling, do we consider motorcycles as well, or do we look at them as two completely different modes of transportation? I, I think we've got to look at them as two complete modes of transportation. Why am I saying that? If we look at a bicycle in terms of its versatility, in terms of use, cycles, for instance, you mentioned in deliveries, they're being used like uh, Nando's and, and what have you. Mm -hmm. You can use a cycle. But when it comes to a bicycle, you can use it actually for exercising, as we said. Mm -hmm. You can actually commute to work. Mm -hmm. You can also use it uh, to, to, to deliver goods like in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. they, they use them quite, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think that the two, I, I think uh, it would be looked at uh, separately. separately. I think mm -hmm. the, the, in terms of functions, mm -hmm. the, the functions are also separate. Okay. Yeah. And then from a facilities perspective, um, Dabakho, you mentioned, I think you said there are organizations that... Um, encourage the employees to use um, bicycles by e either giving them some kind of, I don't know, reward um, for cycling. And then they also have facilities where people are able to shower once they arrive or once they get to work. Do you think this kind of behavior could, one, um, drive like cycling behavior within South Africa? Um, and then two, if maybe more people cycle, maybe the government will then invest more in the in like in the infrastructure in the country mm. um that's also encouraging it and i guess also the private sector has a role to play in kind of investing in um improving the infrastructure as well in south africa for me honestly speaking to make people love doing something you have to interest them in getting something okay. out of it you understand like the company i was speaking Uli's from cape town in stellenbosch that i was speaking about it's not only the showers that were given to the people but it's like if you fight cycle five days a week you get a, a one day off on this particular on a weekend mm -hmm. saturday or sunday mm -hmm. so you can see that there's a privilege of oh if i cycle for five days 
Saturday, then I'm going to be off and watch a soccer match, mm. which I could have missed it. Mm. So it's, it's like the part of education that I'm speaking about. What could be compensated to people to make them enjoy the thing a little bit more? Mm. Um, I've, I've, I've seen many times where people get into cycling and they would say, but I don't have cycling shoes. Mm. I don't have this. I don't have that. This is where companies or, you know, institutions can look at saying, okay, if you get a bike, we could assist you two steps ahead by maybe getting you cycling gear, getting mm. you a helmet, getting you this. Because already buying a bicycle, it's kind of like gets you out of your budget, you know? Mm. So those are the kind of things I'm looking at. And in terms of obviously like showers and stuff, uh, institutions, some of them, they do have them. Um, some they don't. Some companies already do have because already there's running clubs or in gym, some companies yeah. Yeah. or gym. You know, you can park next to your gym and take a shower or whatsoever. So I think those things are already there. They mm. are being enrolled. It's just now how we can actually make people understand what cycling could do for them if mm. they could cycle to work. I mean... Um, when I was still working for corporate, one of the ideas that I had was for my colleagues to cycle from the Gau train station to the office. Mm. And you would hear them, but I'm going to sweat, I'm going to do this. But it's like the showers are here. Mm. But then I said, how about we start by jogging? Let's mm. start by running from a running club, then grows to cycling, from cycling grows to something else. So mm. it's for me, anything that could make it easier for people to kind of like also jump into the thing mm. and also how we can compensate for people to kind of like extend themselves a little bit more in their needs of what they're having so if it's cycling how can we help people to say okay i want a desirable bike for myself mm. or i want bigger tires can they be compensated for something like that mm -hmm. and then people would obviously be in it in larger big numbers i think no, I was going to say, I mean, the incentivizing of people we know works from Discovery. This is how Discovery became such a big, um, profitable organization. They incentivize good behavior, like good driving behavior, good exercise behavior. Vitality like buying, points. Yeah, you know, via mm -hmm. the Vitality program. So we know that incentivizing people, it, it does work from their business model. Mr. Mbara? Right. I just want to add in terms of infrastructure. Mm. Uh, you also need, for instance, to provide the security for this bike, the bicycle once they've actually reached your destination. Mm -hmm. And in other countries, there was a really an issue. Where do I actually park my bicycle once I've actually arrived mm -hmm. uh, at, at my destination? That, that is also very important. And uh, in the long term, in the long term, if you really want to incentivize a cycling, mm -hmm. uh, there are also planning issues which have, which have got to be taken on board, like the integration of land use mm. and uh, also transport. Mm. As I said earlier on, in terms of cycling, you can cycling for a certain distance beyond which it's, no, it's not feasible. Mm. So if you can integrate uh, uh, commercial, industrial uh, land use with where the people are, mm. uh, make mm -hmm. the distance actually reasonable, mm. they are short, people can actually can actually cycle. Mm. Then there's also another issue, which in South Africa, uh, apart from, from the out, out train uh, uh, situation where they've actually integrated an integrated system, people can actually drive park their car and hop in the, the out train. You can also do the same with, with bicycles. If mm. you provide security at these stations, and then people can actually also use uh, use uh, this public transport. It helps. Mm. Mm. Then again, <laughs> probably as an academic, I know it's also a controversial in terms of pricing policies. You want uh, uh, to also address the issue of reducing cars mm. entering, let's say, the central area, <laughs> applying traffic management schemes, traffic calming schemes, so that you, you actually discourage vehicles mm. from reaching certain areas where cyclists can actually use. Mm. In the long term, again, uh, these issues uh, have got to actually be, to be considered. In other countries, they've actually been successfully mm. implemented. Mm. I know also in other countries, when you talk about integration, you can actually have you take your bicycle, use it on the last mile from your home to a train station, and then you take your bicycle with you in the coach, you travel, mm. use it in the other end. Another end. That yeah. kind of integration, yeah. again, mm. is important. Mm. So these are also other issues which can actually be looked at in terms of who, incentivizing people to, to, to cycle. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I guess the government needs to also take it 
into their policy. I mean, you did say they do take it into their policy, but I guess maybe the implementation of that policy is where we're probably lagging behind. Um, so I think because we're reaching the end of today's episode, Dawakho, I'll start with you. What is your vision and future for bicycles as part of, um, I guess, South African's passenger and um, transport systems? Um, what do you think we can look forward to in the future? And what do you hope happens um, when it comes to cycling? Look, us at Bandit's Bicycle Club, it may sound as if we are being too optimistic when we actually tell you our great plan of what we actually hope for for the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have what we call Vision 35, 2035. We're giving ourselves some time, a gap year of like 10 years, mm -hmm. where of the work that we're doing, we're trying to, you know, lend ourselves the ear from the people who are of surrounding of like the mayor's office, the city of Joburg, JRA, Sunro, and so many forth to kind of like come and assist us and come and see of the activations that we do, the initiatives that we take place into, so that we can kind of like show you and guide you where we need these assistance as to people who cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and also like just to mention, many people are coming from overseas into our country. They buy bicycles and they want to sell them when they leave. Some of them are even longer here. And the first thing they would say is like, where do I cycle? So if it's anything, this Vision 35 that we have as Bandit's Bicycle Club and Cycle Boutique, it's more of um, an enrichment for these kind of like companies and institutes to use us as a form of a research, mm -hmm. to say research through us. We have actually this database. We cycle these streets every day. Mm -hmm. We know what is happening and what's what. We engage a lot with taxi owners and taxi drivers as well as to how we can do that. The next thing that we're working on, it's like having a sticker that we can actually incorporate with uh, taxi associations that could go on every taxi in indigenous languages mm. that people could read and understand to saying, oh, let me take note and it should be just visible. So it's visibility, it's research and also like trying to work on a future goal for us as cyclists, as myself, as a commuter. And I'm wishing as this, so I'm saying 2035 for my kids as well to be able to have all these resources by that time to cycle. But not only my kids, students from UJ, students from Verts and any other institutions within the surrounding of Joburg. So, mm. yeah. And Mustambara, what are your hopes when it comes to cycling? How do you think the future of cycling will look, um, not just in South Africa, but on the continent? And yeah, any, any parting thoughts? Okay, let me say that uh, I see the future as being bright. Mm -hmm. uh, the environment currently is conducive. As uh, uh, we are all aware, uh, the introduction of uh, the Millennium uh, Sustainable Development Goals, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, uh, five of them actually speak to the environment mm -hmm. and the reduction of em emissions. Mm -hmm. Goal number one, you want to eradicate poverty. How do you eradicate poverty? People must be mobile in the rural areas. If you can't afford transport, mm. you can't head load goods, uh, it's inefficient, you need bicycles. Mm. There is also, also goals in terms of clean energy, mm. uh, uh, in terms of for sustainable cities and communities, mm. climate change, all these goals which we look forward to. And many governments have actually adopted them mm. and they want to achieve. The, 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 this goals. So the bicycle has actually act, act got a role in terms of the future. Mm. So I can actually see uh, with awareness mm. Mm. The, 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 the model share of bicycle is actually going to increase. And the challenge is also on us as academics mm. really to, to, uh, uh, to keep on researching mm. in terms of how uh, this can actually be upscaled. Mm. So there's also a big role for, 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 for research. Mm. But I think as far as the future is concerned, yes, bicycles can be a role in the actual see an increase mm. in the of bicycle, not only for exercise, but as a regular mode of transport mm. uh, in terms of traveling to work. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed the conversation. I learned a lot. I mean, now I know what an e-bike is. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So I do appreciate your time. I really enjoyed our conversation and I hope to have you both back soon. No, thank you. It's been a pleasure coming through. Thank you very much also for, for inviting me and him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's been interesting sharing views on, uh, on this subject of cycling. Yeah. <laughs>